Have you ever thought you should take one of the most annoying things about games and build a game around that mechanic? Sounds fun, right? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Is it a good idea? Probably not. But here goes nothing. There are a lot of annoying mechanics in games, like small hitboxes or controls that aren't quite right. But I'm going to build a game around ads. You'll be playing a game, and bam, an ad pops up. And another, and another, and another. You're constantly interrupted by ads, with the goal of having to click exit on them as quickly as possible, or else you'll lose the game. And what better name for a project like this than addiction? So we'll have a few game mechanics. First, I'll have to make the game you're playing in the background and also the ads that pop up. Lots and lots of ads. So let's get started with the ads. There's our first placeholder ad, the first of many to come. So to go with the ad, I wrote a small script that just spawns ads after a certain time has passed. And there we go. The first game mechanic thus begins, a basic ad spawner. I'm planning on having these ads not all be the same size. Some will be bigger, some will be smaller, and I might have them get bigger or have something else pop up if you misclick the ad, like real ads do. So I don't think I'll spawn them too close to the edge, but I do want them to spawn in random positions. And a quick change of the script, and thus, we have added randomness. And of course, the ads need a way to close, so I made a script that registers which game object you clicked, and a simple function that just destroys the ad when the button's clicked. And I forgot to add the collider. Now it should work. Yes. Now you can successfully close the ads. Now that we've got the basic ads spawning, let's talk about the first step in the master plan. What are these ads going to look like? This is what I've got. I want to construct these ads somewhat randomly, so that they are different every time one pops up. So I think I'm going to have different elements, like a couple different close buttons and other text and colors and such, be randomly spawned on the ad and have different backgrounds and such. These ads don't really need to make sense, they just need to keep you on your toes. They're not actually going to be selling you anything, just getting in your way. Which brings me to what exactly these ads are visually going to look like. Well, I was planning on making them all myself, but I thought, isn't this game supposed to be annoying? So I thought, what's better than ads? AI generated ads. So that's what we're going with. We're going to generate images to use as the background for these ads. And there we go. It's perfect. The first of many ads to come. So I generated a bunch of random stuff that could be related to different genres of things, and some that don't really fit any genre at all. I just thought they'd be funny for an ad. And these will pass for the ads for now. And so I added some randomness to the size of the ads so that they aren't completely uniform. But having them stretched probably isn't the best. So I'll make sure that they also keep their aspect ratio the same. I also needed to fix the close buttons being in front. I want them to appear in front of their ad image, obviously, but not in front of the other ad images spawned, which there are a few ways of doing. My first thought was to increment the sorting layer each time I spawn an ad, so that the new one will always be in front. But I ended up just adding a sorting group to the ads, which accomplished what I was going for without the overhead on my part. However, I kept running into more problems. The first of which was that you could click through the ads and hit the close buttons underneath them. Easy fix, just add a collision box to the ad itself as well. But then I was having trouble clicking the close button all the time. Sometimes the click would hit the ad over the close button, so you wouldn't be able to close the ad. Which I started to look into, but then I thought, why don't I just use UI buttons? UI buttons already have all of the functionality that I desire. UI elements block each other by using the order they are in the canvas. So every time I spawn a new ad in, all these problems I was solving one by one in code are already solved by the UI and the canvas. It also kind of just makes more sense for the ads to be UI elements anyway. I'm kind of surprised I didn't do it in the first place. And so with the ads looking a bit better, let's talk about what the game behind the ads is going to be. I had a lot of different ideas for what I wanted it to look like. My initial thoughts were to have something like an RPG that you were trying to explore, but I wanted the game to require a lot of attention so that it was more annoying when an ad popped up. And so I started brainstorming ideas of what would be the most annoying mechanics to be interrupted by an ad. And I came up with this. It needs to be fast paced, have lots of clicking, and it needs to have an element of timing those clicks. You'd be more likely to misclick an ad if you're clicking all the time, 
And if you have to time those clicks, let's just say it sounds like a recipe for fun. So this is what I decided on. I even came up with a little story to go with it. There's this box eating monster at a landfill company, surrounded by grinders. And this is where the boxes go. You have to grind them up for him, or else they're too big for him to eat. Your job is to time those grinders properly, to save the company money, rather than having them run constantly. That way you have to click precisely and quickly. I drew this box for the ones that will be eating, and added a box texture to it later as well. But I wasn't really sure what to do for the monster. But I wanted it to match the ads that I was spawning. So I decided to have AI generate a box eating monster, and it gave me this. Which I'll admit is quite scary. It seems to be made of boxes, which might mean it's a cannibal. Or maybe it's just hiding in boxes to hide its true horrifying form that people would scream in terror at. Either way, it works well for this game. And so this is what I've got. The boxes will be coming at you, and while they're in these grinders, you have to click on the boxes to activate the grinder. That way you have to click precisely and quickly. I also added some saws to be the grinders and added a rotation with them, but as you can see, the saws are not a perfect circle. So the rotation looks very bad. Now I thought about keeping it, because the game is supposed to be annoying, but that is an interesting topic. As I was developing this game, I wanted to have it be designed to be annoying, but I also wanted it to be good. You see, some games are not annoying, they're just bad, and I wanted to avoid that. For a game to be annoying, it almost has to be good, at least to a certain degree, and then have just a couple of things that make it annoying, or else it's just a bad game. So I fixed the rotation of the sauce. I want the game itself to function well and be good to look at, but focus on the ad mechanic to really drive the annoying part into fruition. I got tired of looking at this blue screen as well, so I replaced it with a blurred workshop generated by AI to fit the AI generated monster. I also really need to change these boxes to spawn randomly. Much better. I also wanted to give the monster a particle effect. I wanted it to look like boxes were just overflowing from where he was, so I made a little something that at least gives him a little life, as if the boxes he's eating are just kind of overflowing from his mouth, a very sloppy monster. I'm making random clutter for the ads. Just some text and colors and such that clutter it up and make it harder for someone to find the exit button. I also made the enemies highlight when they are clickable, just for testing purposes, but I noticed that if you don't have them highlighted, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would think this game doesn't work right. Having them highlighted I think will help make the game less bad and have the ads be the annoyed part. And so I added the functionality to make the ads get bigger when you misclick on them as well. Then I added this flashing virus text on the ads, cause why not? I feel like it's funny, and it will also throw people off a bit, as the flash can be distracting. There I was, staring at the ads, wondering why am I here? Is this my life now? Ads, ads, and more ads? That's all I see, that's all I feel, that's all I know. Well, at least that's what it feels like at times. Anyways, I added a score to keep track of how good you're doing. Note that you get score by clicking the boxes, not clicking ads. I didn't want to add any reward system to the ads. They're just there to get in your way. I also made some hearts to keep track of your monster's health. But the red hearts didn't really fit the theme of the game so much, so I gave them a cardboard texture. I ran into a problem. You can click through the UI and hit the boxes behind them. It still takes some skill to hit them while you can't see them, but I don't think that should be a mechanic. So I tried a few different things, but this is what the most simple solution was. Just to use a built-in function to check if the click hits a UI element. But the function name threw me off at first. Its name is is pointer over game object, and my mind read game object. I thought that's not what I want. However, this function is part of the event system, so I probably could have assumed that it was only game objects that are part of that system, which in this case would be the UI, which is exactly what I want. But don't worry, the hearts won't get in your way. And of course you need to keep track of your best score to motivate you to improve. Huh, that shouldn't happen. Not being able to click the exit would be annoying, but probably best for the game if you can actually exit the ads. After some testing, I think it should be fixed. I added everyone's favorite part of any game, being able to lose, and of course a restart button. That's probably better than having to start the game back up to play every time. Right now the boxes just disappear when you click them, but the monster is supposed to be eating them, and you're grinding them up, 
so the game is going to get a little more graphic. Those of you who love boxes might want to turn away. I made it so that the boxes come out a little worse for wear after getting through the grinder. So that the monster can actually eat the pieces you cut for him. With a game like this, I want it to scale fairly quickly, where people are going to lose somewhat quickly. Because if they do, they're more likely to try again. Whereas if you go for a while, you're probably just going to think the game is boring. I also made a simple menu explaining the game that allows you to start when you want. It even serves as a perfect tutorial where you can click boxes and see how the game works before diving in. I added some sound effects for the monster eating as well as getting damaged, and a click for when you miss and a click for decimating boxes. I also found a song that I think fits well with this kind of game. It's upbeat, it sounds intense, while not being too intense for just clicking boxes. And of course, this is why you always test your games. I realized when you click the boxes, it gives you score even if the box isn't technically clickable. All it does is just check if it's already decimated, and if it's not, it gives you score. Easy fix, but things like this can easily go unnoticed for a while. All better. And that is the game complete. If you want to give it a go, there's a link in the description to the game. Also, if you have any game ideas you want me to make, you can leave your ideas in the comments. I can't guarantee I'll do all of them, but I'll give them a look. And if you want to see another cool game, click this video. Moose, out.